Good morning. Please place yourself in a prayerful posture this morning as we begin our day in prayer. We ask you to keep in your intentions this day Ethel Gillespie, the mother of Ms. Lynn Brain, a retired STA teacher who passed away. We pray eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. And we pray for all of our deceased family and friends during this month of November. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We pray for the intentions of Pope Francis, Bishop Cecchio, and our seminarian, Honas. I have long considered St. Therese of Lisieux a good and close personal friend in my walk with the saints and have since had a special place in my heart for the Carmelites, the order in which she was a member. Knowing the works of St. Therese and St. Teresa of Avila drew me to understand the lives of a group of women in our own diocese, the Discalced Carmelite Nuns of Flemington, New Jersey. This fine group of amazing women are cloistered, meaning they live their entire life within the strict enclosure of the monastery, and few people from the outside world get a chance to see them. Discalced Carmelite nuns are called to a vocation of prayer, but this does not mean they spend all their day within the chapel. Prayer is their life. Even in work or recreation, they are in constant communi communication with God. Through their char charism of contemplation, they fill an important role in the universal ch church to bring souls to God. All of those moments when we don't think of God or say we're too busy to pray, these women are praying for us. It is a concept so foreign to our modern thought that it might be shocking to know that people right here in our own state live this kind of life. But I felt that we should be reminded of their presence and thankful for answering this often solitary calling. After I was ordained, I had the opportunity to celebrate Mass for the sisters, in which I thanked them for their prayers, for me and for all of my brother priests, which is a specific mission for them. I know I would not be here without their constant intercession. While I could not live out my entire life that way, I can appreciate it very much. And I often take my retreats in monasteries that practice prayerful silence along with manual work. It just reminds me that God calls each one of us as we are. And as we pray this morning, I'd like us to just thank God for those we don't even realize are in our life, helping us often without any knowledge of the effects they have on our life. And so we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, throughout the ages you have called women and men to pursue lives of perfect charity through the evangelical counsels of poverty, chastity, and obedience. We give you thanks for these courageous witnesses of faith and models of inspiration. Their pursuit of holy lives teaches us to make a more perfect offering of ourselves to you. Continue to enrich your church by calling forth sons and daughters who, having found the pearl of great price, treasure the kingdom of heaven above all things. We ask this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. St. Therese of Lisieux, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, and have an amazing day, and a great weekend.